Welcome to a short video summary of our Philips 803 OLED TV review. You can read the full in-depth review of this TV via the link in the description or by clicking the card top right of this video. The written review will cover more details of the TV performance, so be sure to visit AV forums to read it all. This is the latest 4K Ultra HD OLED TV from Philips, which is available in 55 and 65 inch screen sizes, is UHD Premium certified and features HDR10 and HLG dynamic range support with HDR10 Plus also available. As such, it boasts a wide colour gamut for 4K UHD content, it runs on a new second generation P5 processor and the smart TV system is powered by Android 7. But this will be updated soon to Oreo. The set features a quad-core processor and 16GB of expandable onboard memory and also includes voice control with Google Assistant due in the update coming soon and two remote controls. The second generation P5 processor offers up the usual host of Philips picture processing with the addition of the new Perfect Natural Reality feature which Philips claims turns SDR content into HDR-like images. Philips UK provided this review sample of the OLED 803. There's no doubting the sleek and minimalist design of this 65 inch screen with its bezel free look and two small 90 degree chrome feet. There is a Philips logo on the left hand foot in white and that is it for the front side of the TV. The feet are small and fixed to the bottom of the chassis by screws and they can only be fitted one way so you won't put the wrong feet on the wrong sides. The gap between the feet is 31.5 inches and each is 13 inches in from the edge of the screen. As with most modern OLED panel designs this year, the top panel is incredibly thin and as you move down the rear of the set there is a wider section which on the 803 bulges out to fit the electronics and connections along with the three sided Ambilight LEDs. Looking at the rear, the connections are on the right side of the back panel in both sideways and downwards firing configurations and the triple woofer ring audio system is centrally mounted between the Visa mounting screws. On the side we have a CI slot, USB 2 and USB 3 slots, a headphone jack and two HDMI slots which are full bandwidth HDMI 2.0 ports capable of supporting 4K 60p signals. The downwards facing connections include a further two HDMI slots which are not full bandwidth but will support 4K 30p signals along with satellite and terrestrial tuners, an ethernet port, two 3.5mm component and audio jacks and a digital audio output. All four of the HDMI ports are ARC compatible. The Philips 65 OLED 803 ships with two supplied remote controls that are very different designs from each other. The first is a traditionally sized unit that has the TV controls on one side and a full QWERTY keyboard on the other. It has a traditional layout with a directional pad and enter key surrounded by other direct access keys spread out in a logical manner. It is a little larger than most modern remotes so it takes a little while to get used to. The second thin remote looks like one of the feet used on the TV stand. It has hardly any keys and a very small directional swipe pad. I will admit it took me longer than it should have to figure out how to use this one. It's not as intuitive or responsive as the LG Magic Remote system and I could see it being lost down the back of the sofa quite easily. While the picture quality is the ultimate goal of a TV set, it also has to be easy to use for the whole family and offer intuitive ways to find what you might be looking for. At the time of the review in October 2018, the 65 OLED 803 was running Android 7 and is still waiting for an upgrade to Oreo. The smart TV system offered by Android TV is obviously Google heavy in its layout and functionality, with the page layout the same as you would see on any smart system running this OS. It seems logical enough to find your way around the favourites, Philips collection, apps, games and settings after pressing the home button. The app selection is good, but there are a few missing such as Now TV and most of the Treshow catch-up services are not there either. Again, when you compare this directly with the competitors of the Philips, it does feel a little bit lacking for a modern smart TV system, even if it is a bit more liberal with its adult triple X selection of apps. Netflix will play back HDR 4K content via the app, but YouTube and Amazon are only 4K capable at this time, with no HDR support and no HDR10+. The TV tuner is Freeview only and doesn't offer Freeview Play functionality built in like most of the competition, which we think is a misstep here by Philips. There is a full TV Guide EPG available via direct button press on the large remote, but like most of the apps here, it feels slow to use. 
while we never experienced any Android crashes during our two weeks testing the 803, we did find it was slow and somewhat clunky compared to the best out there, like LG's webOS system. Philips highlight feature for the 803 OLED TV is the introduction of the second generation P5 picture processor and new features that are associated with that. While some manufacturers are basing their marketing positions this year on the director's intent and producing image quality that matches that of a broadcast grade monitor, Philips are going off on their own once again, promising SDR images that are HDR. The Philips 803 OLED also features three-sided Ambilight, which works incredibly well in the ISF mode to provide a static bias light behind the screen, which, when set up correctly, can reduce eye strain and make the viewing experience more comfortable and relaxing at night. We really like this feature as there is good science that supports its use and improves the experience for the end user. Of course, Philips also includes a number of settings where you can go absolutely mad and have a full nightclub if you so desire, or have the colours follow what's happening on screen, which might appeal to some gamers out there. While the Philips TV lineup has always been well known for its picture processing and enhancement features, it's also nice to see that there are two ISF C3 picture presets which should be accurate to the industry standards. As we can see in the grayscale charts, the out-of-the-box results are very good and in line with most OLED TV manufacturers this year. We have Delta E errors all below the visible threshold of 3, which translates to on-screen images that are free from any visible colour tint or errors. Gamma is also tracking nicely to the BT1886 curve values, with just a few minor spots slightly high or low. These are not visible or noticeable with actual content. Looking at the Rec. 709 colour saturation chart, we see that while colours in white could line up better in the actual graph, because we have Delta E's lower than 3 for both grayscale and colour saturation, these issues don't cause any major errors with actual viewing materials. Of course, we have the controls available to calibrate the TV perfectly, but as it stands as an out-of-the-box preset, there are no major issues with image quality. Most viewers would never see any of the errors present without a reference image to compare with. The 65 OLED 803 has a suite of calibration controls available which will allow us to adjust the white balance and CMS system to get image quality even more accurate in the graphs. As you can see in the grayscale chart, some slight adjustments of the white balance control gave us a flatter scale and Delta E errors all under 1. Gamma was the only area where we couldn't flatten out the results fully, but these are not issues we would ever see on screen with actual viewing material. Overall, there isn't much more we could do to improve the look of the graph and with actual viewing material on screen, we doubt the majority of viewers would notice the slight differences between this and the out of the box results. So there's no real need required for a professional calibrator. The HDR PQ EOTF results for the Philips 65 OLED 803 are good, with excellent tracking until the native panel limitations dictate where the tone mapping should roll off. This is the same for 1000 and 4000 nit metadata signals, with no difference in the tone mapping response. It would be far more useful if Philips employed an automatic tone mapping system that reads the static metadata and adjusts the tone mapping accordingly so consumers get the best possible image without switching settings manually. With DCI-P3 coverage, the tracking was not nearly as accurate as other OLED panels we've tested this year. The out-of-the-box performance here was a little off when it came to the white point, which slightly affects the saturation of red, but it was with 75% saturation of yellow and green that grabbed our attention. This means that these tones are far too bright and don't fall where they should. However, we couldn't really see the effect of this with actual HDR viewing materials where colours appeared natural and realistic with no obvious push. Using the HDR movie mode for our measurements in the warm white balance setting, which gets close to D65, we measured 712 nits peak brightness on a 10% window. As we keep saying, this is only one part of a far bigger set of parameters which make up an HDR image. Automatic brightness limiting is also very good in HDR mode, with a more relaxed approach compared to rival OLED screens we've seen this year. This means that there's no immediate dimming of the image if you suddenly have a snow-covered mountainside or other rapid change in brightness on screen. 
Panel uniformity has also moved on with the 2018 OLED TVs, with no signs of the types of issues that used to be a problem. There are no signs of dark edges, vignetting and dirty screen effect with the 803 looking clean with full frame slides. As with all manufacturer OLED TVs, there are some slight bands visible at 2 and 5% stimulus in a dark viewing room, but we didn't notice these at all with a wide variety of viewing material including some really tough dark scenes. Upscaling of 756i in DVD is excellent, with a nice sharpness without any ringing or over the top edge enhancement. HD to 4K is also top drawer in terms of scaling, again with no obvious issues with backdoor processing. You can, of course, get carried away with everything Philips offers you in terms of edge enhancement, sharpening and, and contrast boosting processing from the P5 processor if the desire should ever arrive to do so. Thankfully, there are also off switches on all of them. In all our normal viewing processing tests at various resolutions and frame rates, the Philips passed all of them with flying colours. On-screen motion and scaling really are excellent here. The SDR ISF picture mode is mimicking the performance of the mastering display that your film or TV content was produced on and by doing so it allows you to see it as intended. Once you watch for a while, you'll soon realise that you are seeing more detail in the image that OLED can provide. Colours in this mode are vivid but realistic and natural. Skin tones look fantastic with superb shadow details and every line and pore can be seen, not smudged by over-processing or being too bright. The HDR performance out of the box in the HD cinema preset looks superb. So it is baffling that Philips doesn't have any more HDR capable apps on the 803. It really does produce a high dynamic range image that really shows off the strengths of OLED technology and offers a perceived brightness that is probably at the top of the current crop of 2018 OLEDs we've tested so far. Indeed, next to our long term LG C8 and the Sony AF9, the 803 has the edge with HDR10 material in the dynamic stakes. This certainly gives an impactful image that is full of detail, colour and superb dynamics. Colours are vivid yet suitably balanced. The strengths of shadow details and excellent mid-tone retrieval add depth and volume to the image, making it appear with more pop, especially with small peak highlights and reflections at the pixel level looking so sharp against dark areas of the image. As always, we have to point out that there's no such thing as a perfect TV, and with every model, it'll be a case of seeing if it lives up to your wish list of features and you are prepared to make some compromises to get the most of what you need. There is no one size fits all, even with manufacturers using the same LG display supplied OLED panels, each has their own processing and imaging twists to make them their own. With the Philips 803, you're making some choices and compromises with most of the models this year. There's no support for Dolby Vision or Dolby Atmos Audio, which will likely see a few people turn away at this point as they see it more as a must have. There's also the fact that Philips uses Android 7 at this moment in time, but this will be updated soon to Oreo. However, the UI and Smart TV system do feel underpowered and underfeatured with no free view play on most of the major catch up services in the UK. It also only has a few of the major movie streaming services. We're also disappointed to see no HDR from the Amazon or YouTube apps at this time of the review, although Netflix does offer these. Finally, when it comes down to image quality, the Philips OLED 803 really did surprise us with some of the most accurate and compelling SDR and HDR images we've seen this year. It really does perform at the same standards as our favourite models like the LG C8 and Panasonic FZ952 and offers up images any film fan would be happy with. It does this while offering some of the best motion we've seen this year with superb 24 frames per second playback. We feel this performance, along with genuinely useful Ambilight bias lighting and superb motion, elevates the 803 to our highly recommended status, even with the caveats we've mentioned in some detail within the review. We go into far more detail about this TV and more in our written review on AV forums, so head over there now to check it out. If you enjoyed this video then please like and subscribe and press the notification bell to be told when our next review is live. You can find more reviews, news and articles like this at avforums.com, Europe's largest community for TVs, home cinema, movies, games, tech and gadgets. Thanks for watching.